Okay, today we're trying the classical duck shit dansong oolong tea. <laughs> and here is the color of the liqueur for you. And there it is there. And here are the leaves. Now it said it was a lightly oxidized, and to me that would be more uh, green than black, but these leaves look awfully black. So here is the leaves after about three or four brews, I forget how many we've done. And as they're opening up, you can see they are more green, which is so wild because Look at how dark they are. And then they're green when they open up. So that would be more lightly oxidized. And look how long and big the leaves are, how full they are. Hubby and I have uh, moved to the couch and are having Valentine's tea together. And I cannot tell you innumerable times, countless times, we have brewed this and it's still coming out good. So that is a good quality tea. And um, I've gotten out a lovely English teacup. So, uh, because it's Valentine's Day and it feels pretty. And we've been doing lots of bird watching. And these European starlings scare away all the other birds and they're hungry all day long. Most of the others eat in the breakfast time and in the evening time, but these are just constantly eating. And these two are Valentine lovebirds or dogs. So here are my tasting notes. And um, there's the Chinese name for it. And uh, you can see um, it says it literally uh, means smells like duck shit. I don't know if that, how that's pronounced. Yashi Shuang, something like that. I got this from Yunnan Sourcing. It is an oolong. The website tells me it's from this Ping Kang Tu, and I will not tell you that's pronounced correctly. <laughs> uh, village in the Phoenix Mountains, not to be confused with the Phoenix Mountains in Phoenix, Arizona, <laughs> but instead outside of this city in the uh, Gong Dong province, and I looked that up. Shazu City in Gong Dao province is over here. And I went ahead and looked it up on Google Maps and zoomed in. You see where the city is and the province there. So, um, for processing uh, from the website, it says it's lightly oxidized, and I was confused because that would put it more on the green side than the dark side of oolongs, and um, that didn't equate for me uh, because the leaves looked rather dark, and I need to add to my notes. Um, then after it was steeped, I saw that the leaves were green. You saw that already. Um, for Dan Song, which I think I'm saying that right, Dan Song, maybe. Uh, and it's not Dan Kong, like it looks. So now when people say Dan Song, I know what it means because I um, can have the... Uh, visual of the word and the pronunciation. I've got to uh, see my notes for the first dance song I took, 
which um, I'm not going to go over with you, but here it is. And um, you can go watch uh, that video uh, for all these notes, but you see um, that it means a single bush. And here's all the uh, varieties from Wikipedia, and I can't find this variety in this list. I still wanna go try all those. So the, the next thing, of course, is a fun play on the name. I mean, uh, so when we were tasting it, uh, we had a lot of giggles and laughs. And here's the some of the things my husband, he's a comedian. <laughs> he says, um, he says, when a duck sits, it's tea time. Oh, my gosh, that just cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> And then it says, uh, the, then I was thinking about this. <laughs> when you get mad, you can say, honey, where's the duck shit? <laughs> or have you seen my duck shit? <laughs> and then maybe you could do a better job about pronouncing it. Like, where's my duck shit? <laughs> Gives you a good excuse to say the cuss word. I mean, okay. Um, <laughs> and he says, it's the pouring of the poo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We were cracking up. Uh, he said, "He said this is what happens when a duck exits." <laughs> Just like you know, bird doo doo that that drops on your head when you're going for a hike and it flies overhead. <laughs> Ducks do that too. And some people say duck poo. <laughs> I've heard people say duck poo to avoid saying a cuss word, but Huppy says duck sit, <laughs> which totally cracks me up because it's after the first thing he said. When a duck sits, it's tea time. So he kept saying duck sit, duck sit. So it's duck sit. And when a duck sits, it happens. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um <laughs> he, said, he said this. Once I knew of once I knew I was standing in Duxit, I had to get my dance on. <laughs> you know for the 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 no, oh, I got it spelled wrong here. For the for the dance on. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says to air is human to drink dutsit is a challenge <laughs> okay it's okay i'm done <laughs> we 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 did have quite a few good laughs so from the website, um, it says it's a robust oolong grown from a wrong, I can't stop laughing, younger plantation uh, bushes, but is well processed and very flavorful. If you're looking for a bargain on duck sit, <laughs> then look no further. Um, and then it, it gives the, the name um, it says it's a rare Donsong varietal grown in and around. And then it gives the village name. I love that, that we can actually have the village name. We talked about the location already. <laughs> it's called Duck Shit Aroma because in the village area, the soil has somewhat of a yellow brown look to it. And is unique to that area. With the teas, with the teas, the soil type is the key element in the tea tasting. Villagers wanted to guard the uniqueness of their tea bush, so they told outsiders that the color and uniqueness of the soil in their village was due to the copious amounts of duck shit and began to call their dansong duck shit aroma. True or not true, it's an entertaining story which reveals why the tea has such a gross name. <laughs> um, 
And there's some more notes uh, from their website. Lightly oxidized, highly aromatic with flower, honey, and long gone notes. The mouth feel is delicate and soothing, and the taste is perfectly balanced, sweet, bitter, and astringent notes. Okay, so it's grown at a 700 meter altitude. So there is the color. I've got golden on the color scale. I get that color a lot. Um, earthy uh, is the aroma uh, flavor, and which is the roasted that I have under that. And then I also got fruit category because of the honey, which is so warm and comforting. And I could just smell and smell and smell this. It reminded me of the other dance song I tried. Um, I wanted to do the same thing with it. In fact, all of the tasting um, was very similar to the other one that I had. So I still have the other one. And what I want to want to do one day is to uh, get them both out and brew them up at the same time. Uh, to compare them to see how they're different. Um, this one has a body of meeting, yum, which is really nice. It was like I could almost just feel the texture of the roast, is, as oddly as that sounds. The astringency was bright and light, which is the second category from the lowest. It's a nice spot on the astringency scale. And the taste, oh yeah, the roast. I love roasted and smoky and toasted. Those are my favorite. And I also got a little bit of a uh, creamy. Oh, if we go back up to the scents, Hubby kept saying it smelled sweet. Um, at first, that's all he smelled. Um, for me, I smelled the roasted first, but he didn't recognize it as honey he just said it was sweet but I didn't really get the sweet in the tasting but I did get some creamy which would be like um cream <laughs> uh butter creamy and butter is where I identify creamy I've I've learned a lot so I guess I could add the word buttery to it uh so um, for the finish, I got the uh, both the juicy and the lingering. Um, both came out for me. And would I buy it again? Sure. Would I keep it on hand? Well, it'd have to share with all of the other ones in the similar kind of category. I might keep one dance song on hand, but not all of them. So, uh, but I did love it. And I do love it. 